All right, thank you so much. So uh, my name is Luis Soengsen. Um, I graduated here PhD in mechanical engineering, uh, but I also uh, have been working at the Vince Institute uh, in collaboration with Jim Collins um, on a variety of topics, including uh, another presentation that you will see later on in wearable synthetic biology. But um, this is one that we wanted to present to you because we believe it's actually pretty cool. And is this concept of CRISPR responsive smart materials. So. Um, as you know, Rachel um, already described, you know, for the last maybe you know 50 years or so, uh, people have really eagerly experimenting with like biomaterials, and and reality is that we have had a ton of advancement, uh, you know, from composites, metals, polymers, you know, synthetic and functionalized materials that at the end of the day accomplish a certain goal. Uh, reality is that still the idea of bringing new biocompatible materials capable of responding to specific biological triggers is still like something that uh, is a priority. And so our very, I guess, peculiar way of addressing this, and we don't want to claim necessarily that, you know, we wanted to solve all the materials problem, was can we create uh, programmable, nucleic acid programmable materials that somehow can respond to, to us and to the environment to do interesting things. And the way we sort of thought it was fun to accomplish this is uh, through this idea of uh, embedding uh, programmable DNA nucleases, which is this, uh, you know, CRISPR enzymes, uh, into materials uh, with interesting chemistries to accomplish such a thing. Uh, if you guys, uh, you know, if anyone here is interested on, uh, on these results, all of, everything that I'm going to respond, uh, kind of like present here, it has already been published in these publications in science that we uh, recently um, got out. So the, the basic principle is that, um, you know, CRISPR, CRISPR enzymes are highly programmable nucleases. So they have a guide uh, that you can program to really detect nucleic acids in a very specific way. Uh, then if you embed those into, into materials, uh, specifically polymers, that have either tethered or that are either tethered or cross-linked with DNA, then suddenly you can actuate those materials and change uh, their properties. Uh, specifically, the things that I'm going to show today is a couple of demonstrations that we did across different uh, polymer chemistries, specifically PEG hydrogels, uh, polyacrylamide DNA gels, and carbon black DNA gels. So just for you to sort of uh, just for you to kind of like um, understand a little bit better this this diagram uh, in the first block that says PEG DNA gels, uh, for example, there you, you can have a matrix that is made of uh, primarily PEG, uh, but you can have this single-stranded DNA uh, that has uh, cargos tethered into them. Uh, those, as you will see later, can be you know, anything from enzymes to fluorophores to small molecules that then we can cleave uh, in order to make materials that release things into the environment. But in other chemistries, such as the middle one that says polyacrylamide DNA gels, we can actually have DNA as if its fundamental cross-linking unit so that you can actually trap things inside the material or have a very densely cross-linked material, but the moment that you cleave those through the activity of CRISPR enzymes, which again are programmable, then you can suddenly actuate those materials to swell more or to be more permeable, uh, basically affecting their mechanical properties, at least in the sense of permeability. And um, the third one that I, want, uh, I will discuss today is this idea of uh, other more interesting potentially conductive materials. So these carbon black DNA gels, carbon black is, is is um, uh, you know a material that is highly can be made to be highly conductive, and if you because of uh, functional groups that it presents, uh, it actually has this capacity to cross-link tightly with uh, with single-stranded DNA. So just by combining carbon black with DNA, you can actually make these polymers, complex polymers that are conductive, but yet they are mechanically attached together by by these DNA strands. Uh, hopefully, to create potentially electronics that are uh, can be modulated by the activity of CRISPR. All right, so um, schematically, this is what we accomplished, and I'll show you data in a moment. Uh, we, we were able to demonstrate that for these uh, materials, specifically these polymeric hydrogels, we are able to uh, uh, on-demand release uh, cargos, which include enzymes, small molecules, uh, but also cells. Um, we're able to create conductive materials that uh, upon sensing of nucleic acids in the environment can detach from electrodes, uh, basically, you know, short-circuiting or, in this case, open-circuiting, uh, you know, uh, 
electronic circuits to, to be measured, uh, but also as, as medium to, to change permeability, as we discussed uh, previously, uh, in order to do other interesting things like short circuiting RFID antennas and other things that are kind of like more in the realm of devices uh, to make it more visible of how like, you could use this uh, for diagnostics and other purposes. So I know that this is kind of like a data dense slide, but just bear with me in a minute. Um, so here we have this PEC, uh, PEC matrix, and again, we have tethered, um, uh, we, we're able to tether molecules here. Uh, in panel B, for example, you see a fluorophore that is on demand released from this hydrogel uh, upon the addition of a single stranded DNA that is our target. So in this case, a gel has this, this molecule and it has embedded um, uh, Cas12A enzyme, which is a type of CRISPR enzyme, uh, and, and it has been programmed to detect a specific uh, uh, target, DNA target. And as you can see, depending on the presence of a specific target, as compared to a scrambled DNA in the environment, you can have a, uh, you know, a very different release profile. Uh, we did the same for, for enzymes, so you can not only imagine to release small molecules into the environment, but also uh, enzymes into, into kind of like the surrounding uh, medium, and that, as you know, other presentations have alluded to, uh, could have very interesting implications because you can release you know, peroxidases or other things into, into the surrounding uh, buffer to, to, to uh, have more interactions and do more um, uh, you know, catalytic activity, for example. Uh, the interesting part about CRISPR is that it's, highly, it's not only that it's highly programmable, but it's also very orthogonal. So here, for example, we, we created this hydrogel in panel D uh, to detect uh, four, uh, four different types of, uh, actually five different uh, genes in, um, a, you know, that are involved in the resistance of um, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is you know, the superbug that you find in hospitals. Uh, and you can see that depending on kind of like the different target that you expose this to, you have a different uh, amount of, 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 of activity, which is really nice. Um, in terms of the electronic circuits, wh what we did is we created these uh, carbon black DNA hydrogels uh, that we basically just deposited into interdigitated electrodes. Uh, as you can see here, uh, those are just, they look like little dots, uh, dark dots into, you know, in these electrodes. Uh, what is interesting is that when you embed these electrodes into an environment that has, for example, the target that you want to detect, these, these dots just like dissolve or detach from the electrodes um, much more frequently when, when you have an environment that has that target. Uh, so here, for example, you can envision a circuit that is just like stands there, uh, but the moment you, you can like interact with it and or the environment interacts with that electrode and that environment has the nucleic acid target that you're interested in detecting, then, then itself the circuit, itself the conductive pathways on those circuits will, will change. And, uh, and that's what we have demonstrated here. Um, obviously, this is not perfect technology. For example, like uh, many of these interactions happen at the interface between the interdigitated electrode and, and the bulk material. Really destroying a, like, you know, a bead of, of hydrogel on itself, it's a, it, you know, it can be a lengthy process for, like, you know, uh, you know, for enzymes, but, but in this case, we're able to achieve these results in a couple of hours, which is interesting. Um, now, a, a big application that we thought was interesting was for, not only for drug delivery, but also for release of uh, viable uh, cells uh, that, for example, can be immune cells. In this experiment, for example, we created these hydrogels that were able to encapsulate viable mononuclear stem cells on them. And so those, uh, and uh, you know, in our publication we have other sort of gels that you can see, but these are, these look very well in the, in the projector. Uh, we have this, this let's, let's say hydrogels, those could be potentially implanted into an animal, into a human, and those will like actually hold, uh, you know, stem cells on them that may be programmed or not to do whatever. But at the end of the day, the idea is that you don't want those cells to be necessarily circulating all the time or at any point, uh, but rather only when certain cues are sort of presented to them. And in this case, nucleic acids uh, were the things that we wanted to detect. Uh, so if this is immune sense cells, you can imagine that uh, you can have, you know, if you have a nucleic acid that is uh, relevant in the detection of certain virus or certain bacteria, that you want those immune cells to be released on demand. Um, also for cancer therapeutics, this seemed to be interesting. And so what we demonstrated here is that uh, we, you know, if we just present these gels with scrambled DNA, uh, you know, um, 
uh, don't 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 really dissolve that much. Uh, in for example, in this first hour, which is the first section in the in the left, uh, but as you are presenting those with uh, with uh, with more and more of this uh, specific DNA trigger, then those those gels just like dissolve out, and and those release those cells. And the the last section of that panel just shows that um, kind of like a viability test on the cells, uh, just to ensure that you know the actual process of releasing them is not killing those cells, which is those green dots that you see there. Um, so. You know, I know that this is all like different layers of complexity, but something that we thought was interesting is, uh, you know, can we, since we have the capacity to create and to sort of uh, dissolve these gels too, uh, can we use these gels in order to do more interesting stuff in terms of flow? And so, uh, you know, there are some people in the last 20 years that have created these stop flow essays where, uh, you know, a change in, in, you have a paper, a lateral flow in essay, for example, you have a paper, strip that uh, where, where you have flow, uh, but you can ex stop that flow by, by making something cross-link uh, along the way during that flow. And that's exactly what we did here. We did this, uh, you know, in, in, in literature they are called origami or, uh, micropaths, uh, but basically they are just layers of paper that have been printed with wax to have like, almost like channels into them defined. Uh, and, and we can put in different layers of paper, and all these, these things are paper. Uh, you can put different substrates uh, for the cross-linking of this hydrogel. So you can have the precursors, the polymers, uh, you know, you can have dyes, you can have buffer, uh, everything that you need. But what we did here is create this assembly that has all the precursors uh, and everything to create those gels as, as flow is happening. But uh, where in the presence of a target, the cast enzymes will be activated, basically cleaving everything that makes possible for these systems to cross-link, uh, basically allowing for flow to happen if there is a presence of a target and flow to be stopped in the absence of, of a target. As you can see in the, in the panel on the, on, on the right, uh, for example, in, in the presence of the, the, the enzyme, you can see in the bottom that buffer flows, and you can see kind of like in this lateral flow section in the bottom that there is this colored dye that is flowing through. Uh, and, and you can see the matrix there of the cellulose just, you know, clean in a way. Uh, whereas in the upper section, when there is no, um, when there is no target and therefore the cast is not activated, um, then, then you get hydrogel forming, stopping the flow. And so, as you can see, you can have just a very, you know, easy colorimetric signal out of these same sort of materials being, you know, uh, broken down or not. But you can also imagine, sorry, measuring, uh, you know, conductivity out of this, because as, as a buffer is flowing, and these buffers are usually, you know, PBS or just, uh, they have salts on them, uh, you can actually think about measuring the, the, the conductivity uh, of, of these, of these uh, micropaths as a measurement of like distance of how much buffer flowed. And that's exactly what we did in order to just almost like solidify this concept that we could use these very intercommunicated like systems, you know, the chemical, the, the, the enzymatic aspect of CRISPR, the genetics out of it, uh, but also sort of the, 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 the permeability aspect of our materials and then potential electronic uses. Uh, we did a, certain, a couple of demonstrations where we, we actually just in colorimetric uh, experiments, which is this panel A, we were able to show that we were able to create a very cheap diagnostic for Ebola that was able to detect 11 atom molar, uh, like up to 11 atom molar um, concentrations of, of Ebola trigger. And that's pretty incredible because, uh, you know, that's pretty much ballpark in, the, in where like PCR is. Uh, and this is just in a piece of paper, right? And just in kind of like smart material. So it's 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 an interesting application. It's pathway that we're pursuing. But uh, you know, sometimes people want to have this integrated into electronics to do kind of like more automated reporting. And so um, I need to stop now. But uh, but the idea here is that. Um, uh, we, we integrated this piece of paper also with RFID tags to short circuit a small RFID tag, and that suddenly, that's what it hit us, because you know, when you are able to modulate really like materials in this way that are potentially conductive or not, then you can really have these new interfaces between kind of like biology and electronics in a way that we didn't expect to. Uh, so again, if anyone is interested about this, uh, everything is uh, sort of um, published already in science, and we're about to, to, to release these nature protocols uh, so that anyone can kind of like replicate these type of results. I want to thank everyone that was involved in this, and um, thank you so much.